And today I want to talk about sports photography. Sports photography is something that historically has had a very high cost of entry and to be able to get quality sports images. You know, when you start looking at like a 1DX Mark II or a Nikon D5 and a 400 millimeter F2.8, even a 300 millimeter 2.8, you're looking at 10,000 plus dollars for that kind of equipment. And in the past, you really had to have a full frame camera in it, and there wasn't really a lot of options for inexpensive lenses. And over the past few years, that's kind of began to change a little bit. Now, I'm gonna give you guys some recommendations for both day and nighttime shooting. And understand these are gonna be budget setups. These aren't gonna provide you with the same level of image quality or consistency that you would get out of that 1DX Mark II or the 400 millimeter F2.8 lens. But these are gonna deliver some solid images especially if you're shooting in the right conditions and you understand what you're doing. You're gonna miss some shots with these setups. You're not gonna necessarily always have the best images, but the best possible image quality. But unless you're shooting for something like Sports Illustrated or some other national publication, it's gonna be good enough. They're gonna be very solid images. And my thing is I'd much rather be out shooting and using inferior equipment and actually making the images than sitting on the sidelines and not doing anything at all. I talked to a guy, I think I've mentioned this in another video about two years ago, and he wanted to get more serious about sh sports shooting. He was using like, I don't know, a 70D and a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, something like that. And, and he was telling me that he couldn't get serious about sports photography until he got a 1DX and a 400 millimeter of 2.8 lens. And then he was gonna get more serious about it. And, you know, he kind of smirked at me whenever he found out that I was shooting with a 5D Mark III and a Sigma 120 to 300. He, just felt that that was inferior quality equipment and that he was amazed that I was able to get decent sports images with it. But even at that setup, there are other options that are even less expensive than that that you can use today. Again, understand these are not gonna provide you with NFL level quality images. You're gonna have to make some sacrifices. Understand this, in the NFL, they have to have the best possible image quality in the Olympics and all those kinds of things because there's going to be 50, 70 guys all shooting the same shot as them. So they've got to have the equipment that can keep up to nail every shot perfectly because they can't afford a miss. If you're out shooting high school sports, you're probably going to be the only one on the sidelines that has any knowledge really of what you're doing and any kind of even remotely decent gear. And it's just not that competitive. If you get a solid shot, mom and dad are going to be happy. So I'm gonna break this up into two different categories. We're gonna have daytime and then we're gonna have nighttime. And my goal is, is to try to give you guys a setup for about $1,500 for each types of shooting. Now understand that the daytime stuff will not work at all very well for nighttime sports. The nighttime stuff can work somewhat for the daytime stuff, but it probably wouldn't be your best option. And I'm also gonna recommend something that's slightly more expensive if you have a little bit more money to, to start with. But right now I'm concentrating purely on the best bang for your buck if you're on an absolute budget. So what would my number one recommendation be for somebody who wants to shoot daytime sports and money is your number one option? My recommendation would be a Canon T7i and either a Sigma or Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Now I've shot with both of these lenses. They're very comparable. The Tamron is quite a bit cheaper than the Sigma. So if Money is the biggest option. I would say go with the Tamron, but that is only going to work during the day. That lens is a F5 to 6.3, I believe it is, which means it doesn't let a lot of light in. So if you're trying to shoot in low light situations, you're gonna have to push your ISO up way too high. It's gonna ruin your image quality. But for shooting daytime sports, things like baseball, soccer during the day, youth football that takes place on Saturdays, track and field, all that kind of stuff, it works phenomenally well. The image quality is fairly sharp, it's pretty sharp. It's not, again, it's not as sharp as like a 300 28 or a 400 28, but unless you're really pixel peeping, you're not gonna notice the difference. The big drawback to those lenses, aside from the fact that it is, the big drawback for that lens, aside from the aperture settings, is that the autofocus isn't the fastest. When you use like a 400, F4 or 300 28, the autofocus is pretty much instantaneous. I mean, as soon as you turn on somebody, it's gonna lock on. With the Sigma and the Tamron, it's gonna be a little bit slower. As you transition from person to person, the lens may hunt a little bit, it may misfocus once in a while, but 
the plus side of that lens is that it opens up so many more shots that you wouldn't be able to get with a fixed focal length uh, lens. When I shot with that 150 to 600 or when I shot with these 150 to 600s, I was able to shoot from all over the place. I was able to cover half the football field without having to move. I was just able to open up my shot selection. I was able to cover the outfield uh, when I was shooting baseball. It just really opened up my shot selection a lot more than what I typically could get because I had such a enormous reach with that lens and it also allowed me the ability to zoom out whenever I needed to. If you guys want to know more specifically about those lenses, I do have reviews up. Um, you guys can check those out. Now as far as the camera body, I recommended the Canon T7i. If you got a little bit more money, I recommend going with Canon 77D. The image quality is basically the same out of these two cameras. The 77D just has a little bit more buttons and controls, which if you get serious about photography, you're gonna appreciate having those, the ability to quickly make changes to your settings. But if money is the number one option, go with the T7i because the image quality is exactly the same. So right there for about $1,500, you are set up to shoot sports during the day. Now understand the T7i has a relatively I guess it's an okay frame rate. I think it shoots about six frames a second, which most of the time for sports, I'm okay with that because I don't like to shoot at 10 or 20 frames a second because you just come back with so many images to go through. Now, some people want that faster frame rate. If you do want faster frame rate, it's gonna cost you more money, but I would recommend jumping into something like a Sony 6300 or a Sony 6500 which those camera bodies are more expensive and then the lens selection is also more expensive. You'd have to jump into something like a 70 to 400, I believe is the Sony lens, because I don't believe at this point Tamron and Sigma have native mount E-mount lenses for that system. So you'd have to jump into like a Sony lens and then you're gonna be talking probably right around $3,000 for that setup. It will give you a faster frame rate. Your camera will have the ability to record 4K. That Sony lens does focus faster and it is a little bit sharper than the Sigma lenses. So if you got the money to spend and you wanna spend a little bit more and jump into something solid for shooting daytime sports, that is definitely a way to go, but the cost is about twice as high. But you will get better image quality, you will get more frames per second. The only drawback that I found in shooting the A6300 and the A6500, I personally found the autofocus systems to be extremely fast whenever I was shooting sports. They're actually, I think, faster than the Canon T7i and the 77D. Every now and then, I ran into issues where the camera just threw a frame. Uh, I would be firing off on a series of shots of like a softball runner coming towards me, running home, and I'd fire off seven or eight shots, and six of them would be fine, but one right in the middle would just be out of focus. Perhaps that's user error, but I don't find that problem whenever I shoot with Canon cameras. I also didn't find it when I shot with the Sony a7R 3 I found it with the 6300 and the 6500. I couldn't figure out an explanation for it, so I assume that there was just something with their focusing system that was just on occasion throwing images off. It wasn't all the time, it was just sometimes, but for me that was frustrating. That's the only real drawback of those systems that I can see. You also get a little bit better ISO performance out of the Sony 63 and 6500 than you would with the Canon T7i or 77D. It's not significant, but it is there. Now, if you want to shoot nighttime sports, this is where the cost to entry really jumps up if you want, call, if you want quality images. When you shoot nighttime sports, you have to have an f2.8 lens or faster. That's just the reality of it. Even with the newer camera bodies like these A7R 3s and, and stuff like that that have really good ISO performance, you really don't want to push these ISOs up to 25,000, you know, to shoot can, because it's just, it degrades your image quality. Something like the T7i and the 77D, they will produce adequate image quality, but you're going to get a lot of noise in the image, which is going to mess with your colors, it's the image good. look a little bit soft and not as sharp. But those camera bodies actually perform better than what I started with. When I started, I started, you know, five years ago with the Canon 7D, the original one. And the ISO rating on that is not nearly as good as what the newer entry-level camera bodies put out. And I was able to get my business started using that camera body. So you're going to be able to get adequate shots. They're just not going to be the best and the cleanest in the world. That's part of the, the nature of the game. If you want to get into better sports quality images, especially for shooting nighttime, you're really going to have to jump into something that's full frame, but that is a huge cost to entry to get into something with a decent focus system and stuff like that. But you could get away, like I said, with the, with the Canon 
T7i, the 77D, the 80D, which again, more expensive, uh, or like the Sony a6300 or 6500. And now I'm intentionally leaving Nikon off this list simply not because Nikon does not have good cameras. I simply don't know enough about the Nikon system to be able to give recommendations. I rarely use any Nikon cameras. It's been like two years since I've even touched one. So I really can't comment to Nikon system and give you guys recommendations. I can only recommend products that I've tried out myself. If you are gonna shoot nighttime sports and you're on an extreme budget, my recommendation would be go with one of these cameras and go with something like a Tamron or a Sigma 70 to 200 millimeter F2.8. I personally own the Sigma F2.8. It's what I've used since I've started. I don't really see any reason to upgrade. I know the Canon lens is sharper and better, but the Sigma does a great job for me. I've actually talked to other people who own the Tamron lens. They say it's a little bit sharper. It's better autofocus. It comes in right about $1,300 new. If you want to pick it up used, you can buy it on Amazon for like $820. I've heard of people picking up quality glass off of like eBay that's used for this lens, even cheaper than that. And the Tamron version of it, let me look it up real quick because I have not looked up this price lately, so I don't know exactly how much it is going for. It's going for right about the same, $12.75. Same ballpark if you shop around. But if you pick up the used version, which if you buy it like through Amazon and it doesn't work with Prime, you have the option to send it back. Uh, so I don't really have a problem buying used lenses through Amazon because I just thoroughly check them and then send them back if I, had, if I have a problem, which I did on one occasion. I had a problem with the lens that I bought and it was smooth. I was just able to send it back with no problem. With these 70 to 200 millimeter lenses, if you're using a crop sensor camera body, like let's say the T7i or the 77D, it gives you an effective focal length of 320 millimeters, which is not necessarily the best amount of reach for shooting sports, like high school sports, like football and on Friday nights, but it'll get you through. You can still get some solid images. You're just gonna be limited a little bit on what you can shoot in the field. Also, again, your ISO performance isn't gonna be the best, but if you really wanna improve that level of quality in the images you're gonna get in shooting night sports, you're gonna have to jump up significantly in price to five, six, seven thousand dollar system to be able to get better quality images. If you go with like a Sony 6300 or 6500, again, I don't believe that Tamron or Sigma have native E-mount lenses. You're gonna have to go with like the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F2.8, which is a pricey lens. I think that's somewhere around $2,000 right now. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of shooting sports. When I first got real serious about shooting sports, well, when I first started shooting sports, I shot with this, the old 7D, and the Sigma 70 to 200, and after about a year, as I got more serious about it, I jumped up to a 5D Mark III and a Sigma 120 to 300, which cost me well over $6,000. I think it was like 6,500 bucks to take it up to the next level, and I could have spent a lot more money to get even better quality images, but I had to weigh the cost versus the quality, and the jump in quality wasn't significant enough for me to wanna to make that investment. Now, if I was hired by a Major League Baseball team or an NFL team to go out and shoot a game, I would definitely want to jump into the more expensive equipment. But if you're just shooting your kids' little league games and things like that, these setups are more than adequate. One other thing that you can do to give you a little bit more reach, if you go with like a 70 to 200 millimeter lens as opposed to a 150 to 600, let's say you primarily plan on shooting nighttime sports, but you're going to shoot some daytime sports. What you can do is you can pick up a teleconverter, like a 1.4 teleconverter, and you can use that when you shoot during the day to give you a little bit more focal length when you're shooting daytime sports because you have to remember you're gonna lose a stop of light with your teleconverter, so it's gonna drop it down to an F4. When you factor in your crop factor, you're effectively out there at like 400 and something millimeters, which is a lot of reach. That's what most professional sports photographers are using is like a 400 millimeter lens. And if you're shooting during the day, having that F4 as opposed to the F2.8 isn't a big deal. You do lose a little bit of sharpness using the teleconverter, but it's not a big deal. So for shooting daytime sports, you can jump right on in with about $1,500 to get you started and going with some decent quality images. If you're shooting nighttime, you're looking at probably closer to about $2,000, $1,900, $2,000 as a bare minimum entry level to get into getting quality images. And if you got the money, by all means, spend more money. The more money you spend, this is definitely one of the things where the more money you spend, 
the better quality image you're gonna get. Not a lot of us have ten, twelve thousand dollars laying around to invest in photographing our kids' baseball games or wrestling matches and things like that. The 70 to 200 millimeter lens will also be good for shooting indoor sports, like let's say wrestling or basketball. It's a good focal range for that kind of stuff. The f2.8 aperture gives you enough light that you don't have to push your ISO up too high. You can keep your shutter speed relatively high and you can land some solid images. So just remember these recommendations are based solely on being on a super tight budget. This is the bare minimum to be able to get some quality sports images in my opinion. You wanna avoid like that 75 to 300 millimeter lens that they sell at like Walmart for $200 or the 55 to 210 that they offer as an upgraded lens when you buy your camera. Ignore those lenses, they're junk, they're not worth paying the extra $100 or $200 to get whenever you buy your camera. Save your money, just get the lens that comes with it or just buy the camera body by itself and then go out and invest in some better quality glass because you're gonna really need the better quality lenses to get better images, much more than the camera body. So I hope that helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions about budget sports photography or any other lenses maybe that I might recommend, maybe you got a little bit more money to spend and you wanna know about that, what I would recommend, uh, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps you out to get started in sports photography. Have a great day.